This episode is brought to you by my patrons. Elsa, Greg, Dohai, Monica, Sylvia, PB, Sandy, Tara, Scott, Kevin, Glenn, and John. Thank you all very much for your wonderful support of this show. When Dean and John kind of disappeared into the shadows of the tree line, he started seeing something moving down there really fast and something that was really big. I haven't recorded for a while. I apologize. After my recent finds in Forks and Quinault, I needed to step back a little and let the science catch up. I feel now is the appropriate time to resume my investigation. I'm currently at the office of a forensic scientist who specializes in trichology, the scientific study of hair, to see if she can help me with the samples I found in the Olympic Park. Peter handed the samples off to her a few days ago and she gave me a call earlier asking me to come in. She stepped out for a moment to grab the report for me while I set up to record. Her name is Nancy Regan, she's in her mid-forties, and I've got to admit, she's an intimidating presence. Just the way she carries herself. From the moment I met her, I felt like I was in trouble for doing something I wasn't supposed to do. We're about the same damn age, and there's something about her that makes me feel like a kid again. She may not be the most welcoming person I've ever met, but if she's as good as I've been led to believe she is, that's all that matters. She came with Peter's recommendation and testimonial, and he doesn't give those out lightly. (laughs) Hell, I don't think he's ever had a good word to say about me to other people. Alright, sorry to keep you waiting. Um, Oh, it's been a hellacious week. Right, here, uh, there's your copy of the report. Hmm. No worries. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this for me. I hope I didn't create too much work for you. Uh, well, <clears throat> it uh, wasn't too bad. Well, I did a microscopy and uh, I wasn't satisfied, so um, I had to go the mitochondrial route for the DNA since you didn't bring me anything with a root. Oh, sorry. Is that bad? Uh, not bad. It's, uh, well, it is what it is. Nothing, nothing I can't overcome. It just um, takes a few extra tests. Just a few. Yeah, especially for this sample. Hmm. Listen, where did you get them? Out by Quinault, up in the mountains near the Colonel Bob Trail. Why? Huh. Well, it's just, it's, 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 um, it's interesting. How do you mean? Mr. Strong? There's um there's good news and there's bad news. What? Uh, the bad news is I don't get a choice in which you tell me first. Oh look, <laughs> I'm a forensic scientist. I deal with bad situations all the time. I prefer to get those out of the way so I can focus on anything positive I get to deal with once in a blue moon. Sorry, just trying to make a little light of the situation. Yeah. Huh. Well, the bad news is this sample isn't just one animal. There's, um, there's definitely some, some cross-transfer here. Uh, one of them definitely belongs to a deer. I'm, I'm positive of that. Uh, okay. I've got to say, Doc. Do I call you Doc? <laughs> Nancy's fine. Okay, Nancy. I was expecting worse news. If that was the bad news, I'll take that as a win. <laughs> then you'll probably be thrilled with my good news. Why is that? It's um, it's not the cross transfer that uh, that bothers me. There's, well, there's more than just deer hair in what you brought me. And um, well, there's no other way to put this, but I, I think it's also more than one other animal. That's the good news? Our mutual friend. He said you were investigating Sasquatch to see if it exists or not, right? Something like that, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Mr. Strong, I've looked at hundreds of thousands of samples, if I've looked at one, and um, I've seen thousands of variations across hundreds of species. And with this, this sample you bought me... (laughs) 
I have no idea what it is. I searched the database in the um, in the National Centre of Biotechnology Information as well, just to to double check my hunch and um, nothing. I <laughs> just sod all. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> since you may or, or may not be looking for a Sasquatch, I um, well, I thought you'd be thrilled to know. Um, even if I can't tell you exactly what it is, I can tell you that. Um, it's a primate uh, hominidae family, probably in the hominidae subfamily, and um, that hair, <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> it, uh, it shares a 92% homology with humans. I've still got a high from my conversation this morning with Dr. Nancy. I'm not going to lie, I left her office about 40 minutes ago and my adrenaline is still pumping. She wasn't willing to go beyond calling the sample inconclusive, but I'm used to people in the science fields being inconclusive about a lot of things when it comes to Sasquatch. But sorry skeptics, I'm not giving you that golden nugget you want so badly. I'm not going to hand deliver you justification to paint all Sasquatch researchers, investigators and hunters into a corner. But I am optimistically cautious, and I haven't even heard back from Peter yet about the casts I left with him. No, I won't draw definitive lines until the science of this investigation gives me a good foundation. I imagine that'll disappoint some of you who enjoy painting Bigfoot believers into a corner to make yourself feel better about your biases. That hair sample belonged to a primate. Of all the fauna in this part of the Olympics, non-human primates aren't one of them. So this means this sample belonged to an animal that isn't supposed to be here. It belongs to the great ape family, close to the subfamily that includes gorillas, bonobos, chimpanzees, and us. Nancy has experience with the others and still wasn't confident in identifying what I brought her. That's significant. Not conclusive, but significant. Fact is, something is out in the Olympics that isn't supposed to be there. I'm in a port city in the northern tip of the Olympic region of Washington state. It's called Port Angeles. I'm actually sitting in the car outside a tiny restaurant called The Corner House, situated on the bottom floor of a three-story building, which is painted one of the most horrendous shades of orange you will ever see. It's not a common color in this part of the world, especially this part of the state, which is notorious for its dull grayness. The Pacific Ocean tends to not do the region any favors. Olympia's weather's bad enough, but out here... I don't even want to know how many people are popping pills to fight off depression. I get that feeling each time I come to Port Angeles, which has been far too often lately. The entire reason I'm here today is because of Maria. Yes, I've got something I've got to check out later, but right now I need to see her. She moved here after our separation. As a successful designer, she earned the luxury of being able to basically work wherever she wants, and since she has family in the area, she decided to move back here for that support network. She's been staying with her parents since we split up. I guess it doesn't hurt that the move also puts three hours of distance between us. I'd better head in. Can't have her waiting too long. Pushing along this divorce seems to be a priority for her. How was the drive? Not bad. Of course, it's not the weekend, so there wasn't much traffic coming up the 101. I'm sorry. You didn't have to come out, you know. We could have talked about this over email or Skype or the phone. I feel bad that you drove all this way. Don't. I was coming out here anyways. There's a report I need to check out. Oh, of course. Silly me. So everything okay with the job? How's the family? Fine. Everything's fine. 
Listen, Jared, I know you aren't crazy about talking about this, but we need to. I know. I'm just trying to figure out why you're in such a hurry to get to it. I thought we agreed that we were going to take our time. We are. This isn't taking time, Maria. God, I'm in the middle of an investigation right now. I've actually found something significant. Possibly very significant. Your timing sucks. You know what, Jared? Believe it or not, I am not doing this to torture you or to screw with you. I've asked you numerous times to sit down with me and talk. I want to keep this amicable while we figure out how we're going to split up our things. You said you were interested in that. You said you were willing to do that, and then you keep avoiding it. Avoiding me. I'm trying to be patient. I really am. But it's time, Jared. I need you to get serious about this and to take some time for me. But I don't want to, Maria. I don't want to split up. I don't want a fucking divorce. I want you. I want us again. I, I just wish you did too. I don't know if I can give you what you need. I honestly don't. Not right now. Can you at least try? Can you stop being in such a hurry to make this official and give me a chance to prove myself? Give me a chance to show you that I'm seriously about us. Can you give me that? You know what I need. I've been telling you for years what I want, but you're so goddamn busy with... You're busy with your passions. And I don't feel right asking you to give those up. So, where do we go? I swear to you, I'm done, Maria. I am. Once this investigation is over, I want to move on. I really do. I want to focus on you and me and starting that family. I swear I do, but I know I can only show you that. Words without actions are meaningless. I'm ready. Do you really mean that? I... You're asking me to put my life on hold. You know that, right? I've already put it on hold for years. The last five, in fact. It's time for me, Jared. Me. What assurances do I have that you're serious? That you'll follow through this time and that we won't be doing circles around this two years from now? You'll have to take my word for it. Trust me. I know, I know, I don't have a right to ask that. I mean it. It's time, Maria. And if I'm right about my hunch, and the evidence is starting to show that I am, I'll be able to walk away with the closure I need. That's the problem. This runs deep for you, much deeper than any of your colleagues know. I don't know if you'll find the closure you're looking for. Have you told anyone else the truth? About why you do this? No. It's none of their business. I want you to get that closure. I hope you do. I just don't know if I can wait for it. Please give me a chance. I know what I've done. I've seen the impact of giving up everything for this. I'm tired of this damn thing costing me the people I love. I don't want to lose you. My talk with Maria went better than I thought it would. We spent another hour sitting at that table, seeing where each other was at. It's easier to be vulnerable with her now. I just don't know why it took me so long. It took her leaving me in order for me to be able to see things more clearly. I'm sort of encouraged. I mean, I don't really know where her head is at right now, but... At least I know she's thinking, and I can't ask for anything more from her. Maybe. Maybe there's hope for us. I mean, we didn't even talk about how we were going to split stuff up, and that was the entire reason for the lunch. She didn't commit to anything, either way, but the fact that she didn't push to have that conversation is better than I could have hoped for at this point. Oh, man. I hope so. I don't want to get too excited, but between her and the way this investigation is going... 
I'm, uh, I'm really starting to feel happy again. In the morning, I'm going to do a little hiking. I've set up camp near Hurricane Ridge, an absolutely stunning piece of the northern Olympic range. There have been a number of reports out of this area, and it's not really hard to understand why. It's isolated, it's elevated, and it could be extreme. It's not a place most people would go. Only 20 miles south of Port Angeles, it can still take an hour to get to by car on a good day. It's still on the fringe of the peaks of the Olympics, but out here, you feel a world away from civilization. It's very peaceful. I love it out here. I am going to miss places like this after I'm done. I got the coordinates of a sighting this past weekend from some local outdoorsmen, and I'll head out first thing in the morning. It's only a three-mile hike one way, but I want to get there early enough to see what I can find. Their report, plus what I've been getting recently from my Sasquatch sources, leads me to believe there's something strange going on in this specific part of the National Park that might just validate my hunch about their behavior. I'm not going to lie, I want this to be done. Mostly so I can give Maria what she needs, but I'm also not sure I'm making friends anymore. I think Peter was right to warn me about carrying on with this investigation and putting myself at risk. For the longest time I laughed it off, but, uh, but before I left Olympia I received another phone call. I haven't been documenting them here because I don't know why. I... I think if I did and Maria knew what was happening, that'd be the last straw for her. For us. But if I'm going to honestly put this all behind me and walk away, I need to be honest. I can't hide anything any longer. I need to close this chapter so I can start writing the rest of my life story. I can't do that if I'm not being completely forthcoming. With everything. Anyone familiar with Bigfoot researchers and interest groups knows that there is somewhat of a competitive spirit amongst us. You'd think everyone would be cooperative, but that isn't what I've found over the past 20 years. It's pretty unhealthy, actually. Always has been. I think it dates back to the frauds and the shysters in the 50s and 60s. Now with everyone having a presence on social media and money being earned from crowdfunding, sometimes ridiculous amounts of money, the ugliness, pettiness, and subversive bullshit has been ratcheted up a thousand notches. I've always known that. I've always been careful about who I associated with and who I shared information with. A lot of us do. We have to. Not just because of vindictive people, the scammers, or the envious investigators, but the legitimate groups as well. It probably sounds crazy to any of you listening who aren't aware of the politics within the Bigfoot subculture. But you've got to figure that it's made up of people, and people are people. Just because we're interested in chasing around an ancient bipedal primate and not spending our time in some group debating politics or religion doesn't mean we're free of turmoil. Trust me, we've got it in droves. And the money coming into the field hasn't helped. Fact is, there's a darker side to all of it. Typical of humans, right? We're motivated by our own self-interests. We're no different. Bigfoot enthusiasts have problems, just like everyone else. And it happens more than you think. And some of it is alarming. For the past few months, I've been getting harassed. Phone calls in the middle of the night. Threatening notes slipped under my windshield wipers. Letters to the office with bogus return addresses. Voice messages. I can't tell you how many times something like that has happened. Far more often than I care to count. This last one, though. I gotta say I'm glad I made the decision to release these sessions after I'm all done with this. I wouldn't want anyone knowing how rattled they have me right now. Let me play the call for you. Strong, I'm not going to warn you again. Drop the pursuit now. You don't need to cause yourself any more problems. Let it go, or we're going to make you wish you did. You've got many other things to concern yourself with, like your marriage. Focus on that. Don't add to your regrets. Go focus on other things you're ruining and give up this investigation. You've got a week to make the right decision. 
and if we find out you're still in the game after that, you will regret it. I have no idea who that was or even what organization they're from, if any, but getting that call bothered me. There have been a number of Bigfoot hunters, investigations, whatever you want to call us, who have had bad things happen because they were known to be on the trail of a find. Vandalism, threats, harassment, break-ins at their homes. There's apparently no line when it comes to intimidating people. A few investigators have even been assaulted when they refuse to give up. Almost every single one of them quits. They just drop everything. You never hear from them again. There have been a lot of investigators who've been real close to important finds who have suddenly just given up the chase and walked away. We probably would have seen something from this field by now if it weren't for people in this field. I'm not stopping, though. I'm not quitting. I'm going to finish this and then live my life. People like that aren't going to frighten me from it. I need to do it for him. Jesus Christ. Damn, there's two of them. Good, I'm getting these recorded. They're close. Damn it, this is good. Tree knocks. They're communicating. They've got to be no more than a quarter mile off. Those knocks are crystal clear and close. Closer than I've been to them in a long time. Still makes my skin crawl even after all these years, and I've heard dozens of calls and knocks. I don't think I'll ever get used to them, though. I don't think anyone can. There's something primal, nightmarish about an unseen animal screaming like that. Something so deeply entrenched in our instinctual psyche that we can only react like an animal. Even though I think Sasquatch are passive creatures, that doesn't mean they wouldn't respond violently to something or someone they see as a threat. I think the Sasquatch have moved on or got bored with each other. Maybe they're busy hooking up. <laughs> I'm going to try and get some sleep so I can track him in the morning. As if I can sleep after that. Man, what a night. I didn't sleep worth a damn. I actually got up a little earlier than I was planning, but just laying in that sleeping bag wasn't an option. The reports from this area are too consistent, and hearing those two distinct calls last night... Leads me to believe there's more than a solitary creature out here. Just how many out there, though? That's what I'd like to find out. I'm inclined to believe there are possibly a lot more. It turns out my nighttime concert was more than just a couple of Sasquatch calling to each other. See, the vocal range of a Sasquatch is impressive. Their calls can carry miles in the right conditions. And last night, the conditions were perfect. So I figured the animals were maybe a mile or so from camp. But I was wrong. I found their trail about a half mile from camp. I basically stumbled into an area trampled down by a Sasquatch, which left hundreds of prints behind. I cast one of them. It had nice, distinct ridge lines I wanted to preserve. They're beautiful. They're genuine. You just don't fake prints like this with a pair of custom boots. 
These are legitimate, and there are hundreds of them in what is an area no bigger than 200 square feet. I've never seen so many prints in one area. It's like this particular Sasquatch must have been hanging out here for a while, or he did a lot of pacing. Maybe he was getting impatient waiting on his lady. <laughs> I'm following a clear track now, about 200 miles from the trampled site, and... Wait. There's something. Jesus! There's a second track joining this one. This other track is just as fresh, and it's definitely from a different Sasquatch. The shape, the size, it's different than the one I've been tracking. Two Sasquatch together. This is remarkable. I've never had a multiple track find. Hang on. I need to take some pictures of this. Oh. Oh. This is incredible. Even though they walked in a single file, it's still easy to pick out two distinct prints. They're both fresh, most likely from last night. The likelihood that individual Sasquatch would trudge the exact same path at different times is incredibly slim especially when you consider the series of calls last night. I'm going to keep following these and see where they lead. This is incredible. I followed the tracks. They never separated. The Sasquatch stayed single file until they reached the place where I'm now standing. It's obvious that once they reached this spot, the pair of Sasquatch stood side by side behind a thin row of junior trees. The prints indicate they didn't move much either. They stood side by side, but I can't tell how long they were here. There isn't much evidence of shifting or moving around. It's obvious they were only interested in observing and moving on. The tracks turned back to the thicker foliage, splitting off almost immediately. Standing right where they stood last night, I'm, I'm rattled, I'm not gonna lie. Not because I can't figure out what happened and why they split back off, but because of what they were doing here. I'm looking at what they were looking at just hours ago. I'm looking at my camp. Thank you for downloading and listening to episode 5 of the first season. We are at the midway point of the season and it is time for a holiday break. The show will come back on January 8th, so be looking for episode 6 then. Before we get out of here, I want to thank Shelly for her wonderful help with the website and feedback from the show, or for the show, this uh, past week. I truly, truly appreciate your uh, time and effort in helping me uh, see where the website was kind of a little bit broken. You were a huge help. It's stuff just like that that really... Uh, warms the heart to know that people care enough to actually take the time to reach out and, and help out like that. Speaking of people who help out, iTunes reviews are so, so, so important. Uh, I don't beg a lot because I don't like being begged at myself, so I'll keep it short. Please leave a review and a rating for this show. Five stars are, of course, more than appreciated. Uh, the few other seconds that it takes to leave a review... I know on any podcatcher, not necessarily always the most fun thing to do, but it is so appreciated and it helps so much. It helps other people give this show a chance. You could really help out by doing that. I want to thank Smurdly for uh, the cleverly titled Found a Good Podcast. Nice. I like that. For the latest five-star rating and review. We've got 10 of them. I'm looking for a ton more to help this show be found. It's very difficult. It's very crowded out there right now, which is a good thing for all of us who just enjoy good audio drama. But I'm, you know, I'm kind of biased. I have a vested interest in this show. So if you have some time, please go out there, leave a rating and review. I also want to thank John McClain, Heather Auden, Sarah Golding, and Stephen Bateman for their wonderful voice talents in this episode. They always do a wonderful job of bringing characters to life. Subject Found is, of course, a Paul Sadian production in association with Fate Crafter Studios. This episode was written and edited by me and was produced by Brian Bristol. If you have any findings, if you uh, want any legend or lore investigated, reach out to us on uh, the good old Gmail, foundtapespodcast at gmail.com. 
You can also find out more information on the show by going over to the website. All the ways to subscribe, even ways to support the show over at FallenStories.com. John McLean is Jared Strong, and you can find more of his work over at jmacvo.com, J-M-A-C-V-O.com, or over at dogandponystudios.net. Sarah Golding is Nancy Regan, and the mysterious phone caller, Stephen Bateman of Pants Pending Studios, who you can find over at pantspending.com and also on Atheist Apocalypse Podcast. And of course, the wonderful Heather Spiegel out in plays our very own Maria. Music in this episode was provided by Chris Collins and Simon Croft. You can find Chris over at IndieMusicBox.com. Simon's over at SoundCloud.com forward slash Simon Croft Music. All music is licensed and used with permission. If you enjoy the show, how about supporting it? Help us continue these investigations and bring even more newly discovered shows and stories in, in the future. You can do that over at patreon.com forward slash Paul Sading. Each and every gesture counts and is greatly appreciated. Go over to the website, stay in touch with the show. Over the off season, there is a contact tab there so you can write to the show. Leave those five-star ratings and reviews in in the little mid-season break here, and we will see you after the holidays. I hope everyone has an absolutely wonderful, safe, and love-filled holiday season. Be safe, enjoy it, use the time to go exploring and see what can be found in your world. Because remember, until the next episode, all that is lost must be found. All quotes that you hear at the beginning of each episode are provided by Steve Mojo Wilkins of the Washington Sasquatch Research Team. You can find more of Steve's work over at WASRT.net. And I would like to thank Steve for his time on educating me on what it's like to find Bigfoot. <laughs>